If you are currently living alone, are you sure that you are the only one in your house? This story happened to Emma. She had two houses, and before she started working, she lived with her parents in the larger one. The smaller one, which was vacant, had always been rented out. In 2017, after Emma graduated from university and started working, the tenant who had been renting her house had stopped paying rent for three quarters. At first, they could still make phone contact, but later, they couldn't reach that person anymore. After discussing it, Emma's parents decided to take back the house, do some simple cleaning, and let Emma move in. It would be an opportunity for her to experience independent living. As a result, when Emma's family saw the house, they were all dumbfounded. The place was in a mess, with random drawings and scribbles all over the walls. There were those kinds of drawings with a small son and a house, and the parents in the middle with a child. Out of anger, Emma's parents called a cleaning service to thoroughly tidy up every nook and cranny of the house and threw away all the belongings. They simply placed a few pieces of furniture, changed the water dispenser, and Emma moved in. Within a few days, Emma noticed that her black clothes hanging in the wardrobe would occasionally have several dusty little handprints on them. Additionally, she would often misplace small trinkets. For example, when she was combing her hair, if the comb fell under the table, she wouldn't bother picking it up and would grab another comb to use instead. However, when she was doing the thorough cleaning later, she would remember that she had another comb and she would retrieve it. But this trick didn't work here. Several times she remembered having something, but when she checked, it was gone. One time, before she finished work, she made plans to watch a movie with her best friend and intended to go to her friend's house afterward. So when she got home, she needed to tidy up the house first. She gathered the kitchen waste and placed it by the door. Planning to take a shower, as she was washing, she heard a tapping sound in the living room, as if someone was stomping their feet on the floor. Since she lived alone, the bathroom door was left open, and the bathroom itself was separated from the living room. She bent down, peering out from the lower half of the shower enclosure that lacked a curtain. To her surprise, she saw that the garbage she had tidied up near the door was scattered everywhere. Hastily, she went outside to investigate and found a trail of footprints with vegetable soup splattered all over. Moreover, her own shoes were in the middle of the living room. At that moment, she pretended not to notice and didn't bother cleaning up the mess. She quickly got dressed and left the house, locking the door behind her. She called her father from downstairs and her best friend along with her boyfriend, came over after learning about the situation. The friend's boyfriend was responsible for blocking the door, and her parents and friends searched the whole place, including under the bed and inside the cabinets, but they didn't find anything. The scene wasn't as chaotic as Emma described, 
with the garbage bag overturned and a mess everywhere. The floor was actually quite clean, without any footprints she mentioned. The shoes were covered under the garbage and not in the middle of the living room. But Emma couldn't bear it anymore. That's how she moved back to her parents' place. However, after a few days, her best friend suddenly called her and said that the house she was renting had been sold by the landlord, and she needed to vacate the premises by a certain deadline. She asked if she could temporarily stay in Emma's vacant house, as she had her boyfriend with her, and she wouldn't be afraid. Emma agreed without much thought. The next day, something happened. Emma's friend called her and asked her to come over and take a look. Her friend said, Just now, after I finished showering, my hair was still wet. I lay on the sofa in the living room and my hair hung down from the gap between the sofa armrests, just like hanging a towel. Suddenly, I realized that I couldn't move or make any sound. My boyfriend was in the adjacent room, playing games with the door open. I could see everything clearly. But then, a child climbed down from the ceiling and came up to me. He pulled out a strand of hair and braided a small braid for me. After that, the child hopped into the kitchen with a lively bounce. In a little while, he came back holding a bunch of rotten vegetable leaves and climbed back up. Gradually, I realized that I could move again. I thought I was dreaming, but when I touched my hair, I found a real small braid. It gave me goosebumps. So, I immediately shouted my boyfriend's name and he came out and asked me what happened. I explained the situation. After a careful inspection, they discovered a bottle cap-sized hole near the ceiling lamp in the living room. Emma and her friend naively thought that above the ceiling was the upstairs neighbor's floor. But her friend's boyfriend asked Emma, Is the structure of your house high? Is this a false ceiling? Is the house built with a high structure? Emma called her father to ask, and it turned out to be true. After explaining the situation, her father brought two workers to dismantle a section of the false ceiling and shone a flashlight inside. Everywhere, there were handprints left by crawling children, and there were also many Emma's belongings, such as a wooden comb, leather cases, and buttons. Next. Emma's father found a master and asked when they could be sent away. The master told him at least three years. Emma's father slapped his thigh and said that the house would remain vacant for three years. During that time, if there were leftover food at home, they would bring it and leave it overnight, then retrieve it the next day. They also put small toys and clothes there during holidays and festivals. In 2020, the whole family was watching TV in the living room when someone knocked on the door. Emma's father opened the door, but no one was there. The old man fell silent instantly, with a somewhat disappointed expression, and said, This child, I don't know how he left like this. The next day, Emma's father brought people to renovate the house, and from then on, it was rented out again without any strange occurrences.